What happens when you add real-life parameters to beef research? Meat scientist Travis O'Quinn wanted to find out. We do a lot of research when it comes to beef eating quality, and so in all those tests, we actually uh, let the consumers consume that product blind, meaning we don't give them any information about the product when they, before they try it other than its beef steaks. And so we've done a lot of studies like that. But in the truth, in real world settings, consumers know a lot about the product before they ever take their first, first bite. They know some things about the color and appearance if they purchase it at retail. They know about the price. Um, they know about the brands of the products they purchase. And so all those things actually do go into influencing the consumer's overall perception. His team tested product with taste panels twice. First blind, then identified. Initial results matched what other studies had reported. As quality grade and marbling level increased from our select to prime, uh, we saw increases for tenderness, juiciness, flavor, and overall liking for each of those products. We also saw the percentage of those samples that were rated acceptable increase over the same uh, range. And so that was very repeatable. We're very happy to see that as marbling increased, we also saw the concurrent increases in all the eating characteristics. Then they revealed information about the products. The USDA Prime, Choice, and Select Grade Cuts, or those carrying the Certified Angus Beef brand or a generic Angus label. When we disclosed to the consumers what they were eating, we saw a very large brand lift associated with Certified Angus Beef when it came to flavor perception and overall eating satisfaction. When panelists knew they were eating the brand, flavor rankings increased 14 percent and overall liking went up by 10 percent. Flavor is becoming an increasingly important factor for beef eaters. Uh, we've, as an industry, made strides to improve the tenderness of the U.S. beef supply. The last meat tenderness audit data showed that about 98% of beef sold at retail actually meets consumer expectations for tenderness. So now consumers view tenderness acceptability um, as a given, and so they are looking at flavor as the next uh, challenge that they see when it comes to beef eating quality. That's why more consumers are turning to names they trust. Our data would suggest that it's not about having just a brand name on the meat products. The meat products must meet the consumer's expectations for that brand. O'Quinn hopes to take this research to regions farther from Kansas to see if the trend holds there, too. I'm Bob Cervera.